with me now is writer, cartoonist, and mad chef. See, it says it on. <laughs> see, he did that thing with his face. I mean, he's mad. Uh, this is Daryl Crump. He's uh, with us today with a recipe from his brand new book called The Wild Foods Cookbook Reloaded. Has there been a part one to this? Well, That's what you mean, reloaded? Well, well, yeah, I did one 14, 15 years ago and it sold out really quickly and was never reprinted. So we figured that, that it was time now to. Um, Re to relook at it. So I started, I was just going to, re to um, revamp it, and yeah. then we ended up writing a completely new cookbook. So oh. Hence the reloaded. Okay, uh, good. So totally different, a whole bunch of new recipes. Well, yeah, and one that I want to share with, with you today is probably topical at the moment because it's white bait season. Yeah. Now, I caught these myself, especially for you, Jeanette. Did you really? I did. I went out on my long line. Um, How long does it take to catch all those? Well, with a long line, it takes quite a while because you're only allowed 20, 20, um, five hooks to keep within the law. And of course, you bait it with cheese because they're. they're um, Did you really? Yeah, because of the. Well, you have me. You, I see. I don't know. I'm here. I'm sorry. All right, moving no. right, moving right along. I've never, I've never, no, really okay, done that. Okay, I so, have no idea if they well, like cheese. Well, there you go. This is this is a good recipe for you then, because we go right back to the basics. Please do. And, 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 and what's what's white bait? It's one of those recipes that a lot of people try and do too much with it, and with a lot of wild food, the simpler the better. So what I've done, you'll notice that I've got two free-range eggs, <laughs> and I've just beaten those into the white bait. Yeah. Now the reason I do this is because we don't need flour with this recipe or anything else with it. If you beat the eggs in to the drained white bait, it gives it, it sticks to the white bait. It's going to hold the thing together nicely. Sorry, I, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go, go. <laughs> Jason just said in my ear, caught on the long line, taking the mickey out of me for you. Oh, uh, right, okay. Yeah. Well, it's cool, you know, I mean, <laughs> who knows? And what do you have to catch? Let's go on a big In a net, scoop in a scoop thing. net or a yeah. set net, all right? Okay. Unless you're adventurous and, and you, you want to try the long, line, try the long line, you can try the long line. Okay. Now, what I've done here is... is I'm with, not a fish. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. See, that's why I'm really easy to... No, you are. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Well, you could, you could keep yourself busy. You could butter some, some bread for me if you that. like. Yeah, and I'm doing two recipes, actually. I'm doing the, the standard South Island recipe. I've whisked up the egg whites so that they're nice and fluffy. This is how we get Crimby's fluffy white bait patties, and they um, fold that in gently into the to the white bait mix while Jeanette's uh, acting as my sous chef here. <laughs> now, I'm going to fold, fold those egg whites in just loosely so it doesn't break down. That's going to add a lot of the air to the mix. which gives, no flour, that's interesting. Yeah, well, this, this gives you the, the egg holds them together. The free range eggs is best. As you can see, the nice Always. rich yellow colour came from, came from my wife's chooks. Yeah. How many chooks you got? Oh, uh, she's got a bit too many. Too many? Yeah, they get into the bedroom. Oh, do they? Yeah, they one, one has, we got one. Well, no, only one. It's got a pension for living inside. That's, That's quite another nice story. Though, isn't it? Another story. All right. So what I'm going to do now is um, heat up the pan to medium, moderate heat, and three things go well with seafood. One is butter, one is uh, salt, and uh, lemon juice. So all it's a real s all the good things. Yeah. Well, butter is actually quite good for you. Yes. Believe it or not. You know what? I think there's a whole big change to going back to butter. There is. Yeah. It's one of the I good totally fats. Agree. Of course, you don't need a block at a time. That's not good for you. No. So I'm just going to steal some of your butter there. You want around about 50 grams. Now well, this is. Got the roll done as well. Yes, please, because I'm doing two recipes. Oh. The basic South Island recipe, which is a proper one, and I've noticed that, that Master Chef has taken off up here, mm. and so we're doing a a yuppie version with a ciabatta bun. So. Not just up here. Oh, sorry, everywhere, yeah, all over. Where, where are you from? I'm from Nelson. Okay. Southern. And I've been paranoid. I haven't slept since I've been on the road because I've been paranoid that I was going to leave the white bait in somebody's freezer. On the long bait. or something. No, on the, in the freezer. <laughs> so here we go. We'll add the butter to the pan. Now, the reason we use oil and butter is we want the flavour from the butter. And the oil I've used is rice bran oil because it's a neutral flavour. Yep. Olive oil has its own flavour, so you'll use that. It tends to mask the butter a wee bit. Be generous when you're ladling out your white bait. You want plenty. I don't believe in scrimping and saving. Plus, we've got a whole crew here to feed. They've, yeah, you uh, do. They've gone very quiet. They're drawling in the background. So, how long is white bait season? Uh, about three months. Okay. It varies from place to place. Yeah. Where's the best place? Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that on, on, on live TV. <laughs> right uh, West Coast, okay. the South Island, uh, on a good season. So we're, we're bringing this up to speed. About um, 
about medium to high heat. So you don't want it too high that so it's going to um, burn the fritters, so we just want to cook them through. Now you can tell it's cooked because you'll see it starting to bubble at the top. Yeah. So we'll just let that simmer away, and obviously a new stove like this, I'm, I'm not used to it. So oh, you're not used to induction thing? It. It's hot. Well, it's kind of, kind, of, kind of well. It does. I've got induction at home, but I'm used to an open fire. Oh, are you? When Camp you're out the Yeah. Are you? I'm a, I'm a, a, a good old-fashioned Kiwi bloke. Yeah. So the wild, this recipe is in the Wild Foods Cookbook, but it's not just a book for hunters. I mean, we've got uh, a lot of seafood in there right through. There's some wild and wacky ones, pukiko, if you fancy pukiko, um, but a lot of venison, goat, curries. A lot of the recipes in this can be substituted for um, for traditional meat. So if you're a little bit um, frightened about trying game or you don't have access to it, uh, then you can... Uh, I think that's probably, probably half of it for, for a lot of people is just not having the access to it, eh? Well, the, the thing is that it's becoming more and more available. You can buy goat in the supermarket up here. So there are wild meats that, that are processed um, through the abattoirs and that that we can get access to. Um, but if you know somebody that's a hunter or... Uh, somebody that does go hunting, now look at those, look how fluffy those are. Yeah, they are. They just, sit up in, they just sit up in the pan, so they're nice and fluffy. No flour to bind it, it it's the egg yolk's done the work there, and um, it's really good to go. So, what have you been cooking for? Uh, all my life, really. I mean, I was brought up on a farm where, you know, we were so poor I had to scrape the tar off the road. And, nice. You know, but, um, no, well, I had an interest, you know, right back from the farm days, but I bought a restaurant by mistake in the late 80s and realised I had to learn to cook in a hurry. You what? You bought a restaurant by mistake? As you do, as you do. Now, how's that butter? <laughs> I've never made that mistake. Uh, the butter's good, the bread's good. It's all, all right, so we're just about there. So it doesn't take very long to cook. Um, and as I said, the, the Wild Foods cookbook here comes in handy for a variety of things, like keeping the smoke away from the pan. <laughs> that's published by Halcy and Press, and that's in the shops now, or available from my own website, thefishingpaper.co.nz. I just thought I'd throw that one in there, a bit of a hard sell. Now, we're going to plate up. And hopefully this that's a bit is, fancy, plating yeah, up. Plating up. Well, I've learned that. I've watched TV. Yeah, what, what, on this plastic dish? Well, just on, this is how you eat it. This is how you eat a white boat patty. Not All right. All right. Well, in a minute, we've got to do the dressing and then crack pepper, a little bit of salt, slap it on. <laughs> With the, there it is. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think it's nice. <laughs> Fingerprints and all. Yeah. yeah. Good. Tastes good, Tiger? Mm, very, very good. Wild Foods cookbook. You can't go wrong. You put half a dozen of those in your hat. Mm. Smuggle them out of here. Mm. I'm sure the crew, I'll keep cooking. Keep cooking, boy. Crew some of this. We like the cooks that stay behind and do that. Crimpy's book, Wild Foods cookbook, uh, Reloaded, is available now. Yes, as you said, after the break, it's a comedy show just for kids. Australian duo, The